wait a second. Are you telling me that my sales guy is living high on the hog in the south of France, staying in a five-star resort while I don't see a dime from my movie? Yeah, make sure the same thing doesn't happen to you. Stick around. Hey guys, it's Dave and welcome to the final episode in this 10-part series on the making of Backlash, my very first feature film. Now, if you haven't already, make sure you go back and check out the earlier episodes in this series. It'll take you all the way from the very beginning of the idea through scripting, casting, location scouting, production, post-production, editing, basically everything that it takes to make a movie and get to this point. Having a finished film, getting it ready to go out to the world and get into the marketplace for sale. We made a deal early on to get money to finish the film. And that deal was with an international sales company specializing in independent films like ours. And the way that it works is that the sales company will rent space at one of these markets. So for instance, at AFM in Santa Monica, our sales agent would rent a hotel room at the Lowe's Hotel in Santa Monica. That's where the AFM takes place. And buyers from all over the world would come into the hotel and they would go room to room, basically company to company, asking what they have for sale. And in our particular situation, they would come into the room, they say, hey, do you have any action thrillers that would work into the international marketplace? And our guys would sit them down in front of the television and they would play them the trailer for Backlash. Now they wouldn't show them the whole movie, just the trailer. And oftentimes a deal would get made just based on the trailer. They would say, okay, there's no stars in this, so we know it's a low budget film. It's, uh, it looks pretty good, that, that's reasonable. The people are fairly attractive and clearly the filmmakers know how to put together a movie, but because there's no stars, mm, you know, we'll maybe make this like a second or third tier buy or purchase for what we're looking for. And then we would sell that territory. And so all the entire world is divvied up into these little territories, Poland, Germany, Australia, New Zealand, whatever. And the movie gets sold territory by territory. But in the case of Backlash, we made a major mistake. When the executive producers came in and started spending money on our behalf to get the film finished, we never got an accounting for what those expenses were. Now, as the producer of the film, now, I would never think of having anybody spend money on our movie and us being obligated to pay that back without having a very specific accounting for what that was. But because I was so new and I was just excited to get my film made, I didn't even really think about it. Do you feel comfortable with somebody else handling the accounting on your movie, knowing that they themselves are gonna be first to be paid back out of those funds? Don't do that. Don't ever let anybody else handle the accounting on your movie. You have to be aware of where the money's being spent. Because if you don't make money on your movie, you don't get a chance to make another movie. There is a clause that I highly recommend that you put into your sales contracts. It is a cap on marketing expenses, a reasonable cap. Our sales agent put it into the contract that the marketing expenses would be $50,000. We had no say over how that $50,000 would be spent. That was at their discretion. And I did not know enough at that point to be able to question that number relative to our little film and whether or not that was a reasonable expense cap. Now, I'm not saying this is every sales agent, okay? There's a lot of them out there with a lot of integrity and you've got to work to find them. You've got to get referrals. You've got to talk to people that have done business with them before. You've got to get a real good handle on how they do business. Because if you're not careful, you're going to end up with some of these shysters that take your money in this $50,000 marketing expense and charge it off to personal living. Some of these guys, they stay in the south of France for weeks on end and call it marketing. They go on cruises around the Riviera with friends of theirs that are basically considered clients. And they have food and alcohol and entertainment and everything else that, that basically lines their pockets and they charge it as marketing to your movie. And it's not just your movie, it's every movie that they're representing. Suddenly they're getting $50,000 charged to that movie and $50,000 charged to this movie. And there's nothing you can do about it because you didn't have it in the contract to get auditable approval over all of those expenses. So you're stuck with it. So I highly recommend, no matter what your film is, no matter what level you are on, make sure that you have an attorney look over your contract. I'm telling you, it might cost you 500 bucks, it might cost you $1,000, but that is the cheapest money you will ever spend. Because that attorney who knows what they're looking for and understands the language of a contract is gonna be able to say, hey, 
$50,000 in marketing costs, that is ridiculous for your film. They might be spending ten dollars to $15,000 to get the trailer and get the hotel room and make sure everything's good, but that is it. Okay, some travel, I understand that, but that's all gonna be prorated based on how many other films they're doing. All this kind of stuff that they can tell you, listen, no, much, much better to have a $15,000 marketing cap or a $20,000 marketing cap. $50,000, that is ridiculous. That is, that is a third of the cost of your movie. Because remember, I went $75,000 in debt in credit cards to make my movie just to get it to the point where they now came in with their funds to finish the movie through post-production and then go and sell the film. Because now, what happens when you sell the movie? We sold almost $200,000 worth of contracts into the international marketplace. At the end of the day, I didn't see a dime. I did not see one dime back from the sales of our movie. Because what's the first thing that happened? Well, they get their finishing funds. That's the first thing that happens with interest. Then they get all their marketing expenses with interest because they are loaning the $50,000 to the marketing of our film. So all of that gets paid back with interest, with no accountability. They don't have to spell out everything that they're doing because it's basically a blanket marketing clause that they take care of all of that stuff. So now the 50,000 plus the roughly 100,000 that they came back to me and said, yeah, this is what we spent on finishing your film. And this was after the fact. I didn't know about it going in. I didn't know about it as we were going. I didn't have the, the mental awareness to be able to audit every expense on the making of the film as we were doing it because I thought, oh, well, these guys know what they're doing. This is my first time. I'm in my early 20s. I'm like, well, okay, great. We're, we get to finish our film. And I buried my head in the sand all the way until we got the first sales report. And I'm like, what are these expenses? How, how in the world are we still in the hole? Well, guess what? In all the fine print, we had no recourse. We had no recourse at that point. And we, and while I don't wanna say we were taken advantage of, I don't ever wanna accuse somebody straight out of taking advantage of us, what I will caution you with is making sure that you are a business person first and that you don't let your filmmaking passion overshadow the need for proper business practices, accounting, accountability, making sure that you are efficient in how you're spending money, and you are especially efficient in how other people are spending money. That is your responsibility as a filmmaker. Now, I was my own investor, okay? My wife and I, we put our own money in. But especially if you are responsible for other people's money, if you have investors that are investing in your film and in you, it is your financial responsibility to make sure that all these expenses are above board, properly accounted for, and that you have accountability from everybody that's handling money on your film. And if you don't understand proper accounting and accountability and what's a good deal and what's not a good deal, if you don't understand why an M&E costs what it does or what's an appropriate cost for color timing on your film, by all means, get somebody with experience on your team, whether it's a good post-production supervisor or whether it's a good accountant or a good attorney or a good consultant. It's really important to get this person on your team. There are so many different entities out there that are just looking to take your movie and to bleed it dry. That is what this business is full of. It's full of sharks and you have to learn to swim so that you do not get bit. So we had two premieres of our film, one for the international marketplace and distributors and salespeople and the other one in Santa Monica. And I'm going to give you the bad news first. Our New York screening for the entire international marketplace, we had hundreds of people crammed into the theater all the way up until the midpoint of the movie when the projector broke. The projector broke in the middle of our screening. It literally shut down. The bulb burned out and the projector went Boosh. The theater manager came running down the aisle and said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We're having technical difficulties. Please be patient, please. We'll get the film started. How many people do you think stuck around for the 15 minutes that it took them to replace the bulb and get the projector back up and running? Yeah, three. You know who they were? Myself, my sales guy, and my wife. Everybody else left the theater and we didn't make one sale at that marketplace. You want the good news? 
We had our friends and family premiere at the Santa Monica Lemley Six. We had a packed house, a super friendly crowd, and we got to see our movie on the big screen for the first time. My whole family came down to support us. Our friends from far and wide came to pack that theater, and they were awesome. And even when they laughed, seeing the entire crew reflected in the side of the Jeep as we dollied by, <laughs> we're like, oh, there we are. Not something you see on the little screen when you're editing your movie on a little TV screen, but when it's on the big screen and all of a sudden you see things you've never seen before, you're like, oh boy. But the crowd made up for it. It was such a friendly crowd and it was so supportive. The entire place erupted in the standing ovation when the credits were over. And I went up along with my wife and Jake and other people that were part of the cast and crew and it was just the most supportive, loving environment and I felt like I had arrived. I felt like it was such an achievement and we achieved this, this life goal, which was to make a feature film. And even though it cost me dearly, even though it was a pound of flesh at every turn, the lessons that I learned from it, I was able to employ for the rest of my career up to this point. And now, even as I make more films, even as we see our films put out into the world and find an audience, I am still putting into practice the lessons that I learned during the making of Backlash. So if you are a member of the cast and crew, do me a favor, leave a comment, leave me your memory of the making of Backlash. And if we can get together and have a reunion, I would love to do that. Hit me up, okay? Send me a message. Let's get the gang back together. Let's go shoot the sequel. If you're out there and you wanna make movies, go for it. That's all I can say, go for it but be smart about it. And if you've gotten anything out of this series, do me a favor and leave me a comment down below. Just let me know what benefit or what insight or anything else that you've gotten out of this series. It's really helpful for me to get feedback like that. And do me a favor, hit the like button. It helps YouTube put this video out to more people, more filmmakers that might be able to gain something from this kind of series. And if you would, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. I think we just passed 440 subscribers, which is awesome. I'm just getting started here on YouTube and I look forward to bringing you a lot of new content Content moving forward. Guys, again, I really appreciate your support. I will see you soon. In uh, 1995, I completed my first feature film and we had our screening and our big premiere of Backlash, which is really fun and had a lot of good support there. And we are on our way, shall we say, to bigger and better things. And I think that was the best day of our lives so far after second to the wedding, I think. Well, that's cool that you remember it that way. Yeah, yeah. That's great.